so thrilled to see all of you here today for uh, the first Minneapolis Trans Equity Summit. In 2011, I received a Bush Fellowship to work on um, developing myself as a leader in the transgender community. And as a part of that process, we developed a work group at the um, city of Minneapolis. And all of these um, departments came together along with five different um, city council offices to, to begin to identify issues that affect the community in ways that the city can um, help address those issues. We have a strong history in the city of Minneapolis of leading. We were the first city and the first entity in the state to make sure that uh, transgender and transsexual people were included as a protected category, uh, and the state followed suit. And that is a point of pride for me, it's a point of pride for the city, uh, the fact that we could lead the way. Um, and we will continue to lead the way if I have anything to say about it. Um, and if we all in this room have anything to say about it, and guess what, we do. Minneapolis has always been a leader on LGBT issues and any human rights issues, and we will continue to move policies that indicate these issues are important to us. This is the civil rights issue of our generation. Decision makers from the city are here, uh, kind of listening to folks in the transgender community, and I know people I think want to listen and understand more, but this is really an opportunity to have some of those exchanges and build some of those relationships that can turn into really sort of meaningful action. This is community engagement at its finest. We set out to hear from our trans community on what works, what doesn't work, um, their issues, their challenges, as well as really be able to focus on a lot of the opportunities. We have five different breakout sessions and the work that these groups do is going to, um, I think, build on the, the work that the Minneapolis Transgender Work Group has done. We had a really rich uh, discussion around some external focus and internal focus. However, we settled on three really good actionable items that we as a city can really focus on. Um, reaching out to our GLBT business owners and putting some accountability on them as well and opening up mentorship programs to, other trans, to the trans community um, and offering tr our trans youth employment opportunities to develop the skills that they need to be successful. There needs to be a connection between the police of the chief of police. If there's policies being discussed, there needs to be someone in the room who can answer those questions. And there needs to be police officers at the tables engaging in this conversation um, and not have their guns. So that's my second thing, that it's more than just leaving the guns at the door. There's a lot of healing that needs to go on before these conversations continue. There's needs to be, um, and. Um, this, I would say, is the one piece that there was consensus on. Until the police are willing to acknowledge the reality of racism and transphobia, we're wasting our time. When you are trans, you don't transition into a woman. You just become more of yourself. I just heard an amazing keynote speech by Angelica Ross talking about the power of being visible and the power of, I think, developing your own agency to create your own story. Love and courage. For me, those are pretty much the two most fundamental things that you need as a trans person, really as any person. And for me, I feel like I came across that sort of, uh, I came across that by living through my experience as a trans person and understanding that I couldn't get anywhere if I didn't have love, if I didn't love myself. Her lifestyle mimics a lot of the things that I went through as a young person. Our star guest speaker is also a nationally known recording artist. First we're gonna have a a Q&A and a dialogue with uh, C.C. McDonald, who is a rock star in and of herself, and Angelica Ross. And then Angelica Ross uh, has brought her musical equipment and she's gonna grace us with some live music. It's uh, a 
a long time coming. Andrea's done a lot of work uh, with the city to make them more aware of trans issues. And organizations like the Minnesota Transgender Health Coalition have been working for a long time to bring equity and health solutions to trans community. So uh, I think that uh, this event is um, right on the money. It's, it's uh, pointed and it's um, on time and it's relevant. It's really just a great place to be, to feel comfortable, to feel included, to feel like you have a voice, and um, I'm really glad that I'm here. I think that the work group will have amazing um, information to go back and, and look over and study and to uh, set kind of a, a guideline of what, they, what their plan is and their goal is for this project. As today is going to be a day that everyone will remember that we made huge strides forward uh, for trans folks in Minneapolis and therefore Minnesota and therefore the United States and therefore the world. What are you waiting for? I mean, the spirit of the community here is so, um, so powerful and so loving. This is just like. Uh, I, I really can't describe it. It's it's really overwhelming and, and melting my heart right now.